Are you living up to your full potential? I'm Mike Gillette, and that's my question for you. Are you living up to your full potential? Now, if we're going to answer that question, the first thing we need to do is really drill down on what that question relates to. And your potential is different than capability. I think a lot of people hear potential and they confuse it with capability, meaning that, yeah, I could probably be a little bit more productive. I could probably get a few more things done. And that's not what your potential is really about. Capability is part of it, but there's another part of it as well. Capability is, is really math. Okay, that, that's sort of the, the measurable, quantifiable part of, of what we do as people. But your potential also has to do with this other part, a very uh, important part, which has to do with how you feel about things, how you feel about yourself, how you feel about the world, how you want to engage with the world, and the things of, that you dream of accomplishing during your time in the world. And it is in that, that middle ground where capability and aspirations meet, that's really where your potential lies. So if you've ever asked yourself, you know, is this all there is? Um, I wish things were different. Uh, I dream of doing some other thing. Well, those are indications that your potential is going unfulfilled in some way because you're not in some way really living uh, in alignment with your priorities, with your core values. And you know when that's happening. You, you can just feel it. Our core values are not you know, some sort of cosmic thing that just sort of float around you know, in, in our midst. You know, our core values are things that we're, we're aware of. We just don't necessarily notice them all the time, but we feel them. And if we are acting in opposition to them, we feel that. Your core values really reside in the subconscious part of your mind. It's there and it, it's driving a lot of the decisions that you make, but in a less obvious way than your conscious mind where, oh, I notice that it's raining, I'm gonna go grab an umbrella. Okay. Your conscious mind takes care of uh, things that are obvious, observable, and immediate. So if you find yourself feeling as though you're, you're kind of at war with yourself, you've, you've just got deep senses of, of conflict, that's an indication that you are not living up to your potential. So what do you do with that? Well, the first thing that you do is you kind of take inventory. Uh, are you living the way that you want to live. Now, again, we're not talking mathematically, you know, because we, we always, as humans, particularly in, in Western culture, want more. We're sort of conditioned to want more, to expect more, uh, to feel entitled, perhaps, to more. But that's not what it is. Are you living a life that you can be happy with, a life that you're proud of? And that's a decision that only, you know, you can make, and that, that's a, a end goal or an end state that only you can uh, move towards and know if it's the appropriate uh, end state for you. So if you uh, had really good grades in school and had lots of potential, as uh, the adults in your life may have said, but what really moved you was poetry, and you studied that in college, and you knew studying that in college, because you're an intelligent person, that there's not necessarily a lot of money in the poetry game, but that really wasn't what was driving you. You were pursuing this, this, this was your voice, this was your art, and, and you had a, both a gift and, and a passion for it. And from time to time, you get your work published uh, in magazines, in uh, other periodicals. That, uh, that's an indication that you're probably living up to your potential, at least with respect to your, your art and the things that you want to say to the world and express in the world. So the, the outcome obviously varies for each person, but uh, not everybody is brave enough to pursue poetry, if that's their uh, particular passion. And fulfilling your potential involves bravery. It involves uh, making a big, courageous step, which is to expose yourself to that which you really desire. To that which you aspire to. It's easy not to do that because to expose yourself to it makes you profoundly vulnerable and that can feel very scary. A lot of us uh, don't like scary so we, we do the things that move us away from fearful things even if those are the things that we know deep down that we want. So if you're willing to first take a courageous step and just you know, lay your dreams bare before you 
and, and look at them and declare that they are good and declare that they are worthy of pursuit and then decide that you will in fact pursue them. That is the first step. It's a difficult step. It's a step that most aren't willing to take. Now, that's the dream side of things. That's the aspirational side of things. Then comes the mathematical side. You have to be able to work. You have to be able to make yourself work. And there is a, um, a misconception about pursuing your passions. You know, when people say, you know, find what you love to do and you'll never work a day in your life. Well, I disagree with that. I think that if you really want to be good, if you have passion for your craft, your art, your discipline, uh, you will want to work hard at it because you will want to be exceptional at it. You will want to honor your gift. That will entail hard work. And that's where we have to look more at the mathematical side. And that's where uh, tools and tactics and techniques really uh, come to bear. So understanding how to uh, master your mind, how to get the most out of your mind, how to remove uh, mental blocks so that you can pursue what it is that you actually say you want to do with as, as much uh, fervor and gusto as you possibly can. You really have to master your mind so that you are able to sort of get out of your own way and get the most out of yourself. We all have finite resources. Uh, time is finite. And if we're dealing with finite uh, entities or, or quantities, we need to get everything that we possibly can out of them because TikTok, that clock is always moving. So are you living up to your potential? The interesting thing about that question is you don't need me to answer it for you. You know, most of us are not. Most of us can do something about it. Most of us won't. Will you?